So, I'm out here in front of my barn this afternoon and I have finally started making the cutting edge which is right down there for my backhoe. But um, anyway, one of the things that I have on my mind today is the firmament. Now let me go ahead and qualify. I am not a flat earther. I have observed the observable universe with my eyes, with my very own eyes, and have common sense enough to be able to apply some basic physical properties to what I see that clearly tells us that we live in a, on a spherical planet in a spherical universe where things are continually orbiting around each other, you know? Earth orbits the sun, moon Earth orbits the Earth, all the other planets orbit the sun, all them, all their moons orbit them. You know, our solar system is orbiting through our galaxy. The galaxies orbit around one another. You know, it's, it's pretty elementary once you understand it. But anyway, back to the firmament. And I'm going to tell you, I'm no nuclear scientist or anything like that. Don't even have any schooling on things like that. I just have my common sense and, you know, I'll reference back to my other video. I'll put a link in the description about fools and something. The Wisdom of Fools, I think, is what the title of it is. I'm not, I don't remember. But anyway, back to the firmament. I don't know how many of you are Star Trek fans, but if you remember the episode, The Voyage Home, this is when they're on the, Kling on the Vulcan homeworld with a Klingon bird of prey, getting ready to go back to Earth to face court martial. Well, on their way back to Earth, there's a, uh, probe that is disrupting everything so they determined the way to fix it is to go back in time and bring a couple of humpback whales from the past into the future okay well that's not really plausible feasible or whatever but there is a point in that movie where Scotty and Dr. McCoy go to a plexiglass manufacturing facility and they trade the formula for transparent aluminum to the fella in charge of the plant for enough plexiglass to make a giant wheel tape in this Klingon ship. Alright? Well, let's stop there and focus on transparent aluminum. I don't know if there's a such a thing. I don't know how it would be constructed molecularly and whatnot because aluminum is not transparent. But it's an interesting concept to noodle around, you know, mind candy. But um, there's another property of another element that has been observed during nuclear tests and that's called metallic hydrogen so let's imagine that metallic hydrogen is transparent you know i don't know how it would be i don't know what the what the structure of it would be but unstable elements such as hydrogen and oxygen have to bind or you know unstable molecules have to bind with other molecules to become stable so hydrogen one proton and one electron 
I'm not mistaken, there are instances where hydrogen has a neutron or an extra proton or something other like that. So, given as we have observed these things and metallic hydrogen, suppose the firmament was metallic hydrogen when it was here. And metallic hydrogen was transparent so that the light from the sun could get through and it would essentially create a greenhouse type of effect where it kept where it was a blanket around the planet that kept the heat in so the heat didn't bleed off into space and you know that's why it's cooler at night than it is during the day because the night side of the planet is facing away from the sun and and as it does that the heat that was accumulated during the day bleeds off into space so with the metallic hydrogen shell you know the the earth is protected from that so essentially the entire earth is a greenhouse all right and you remember before the flood it didn't rain because scripture says that God caused the mist to come up from the ground, right? And that's how the plants and everything was watered. So we also know that people lived a lot longer before the flood than they did after the flood. That would indicate that there was a higher atmospheric pressure which staved off or at least slowed down the aging process. And I, I don't know how to explain all the biology of it to you, but you know, suffice it to say, higher atmospheric pressures slows down aging. So at the point that Yahweh decides to start the flood, you know, after the ark is built and loaded and everybody's on board and the door is closed up, and Yahweh starts the flood, all he would have to do is cause just a, a single molecule to destabilize in this metallic hydrogen shell that's surrounding the earth. Higher atmospheric pressure, more oxygen in the atmosphere. So at that point, once the metallic hydrogen shell is destabilized, then the hydrogen starts bonding with the oxygen to form water. Once the water reaches a critical point, it starts to fall, and we call that rain. I leave it to other smarter people to work on the science this is an idea that I have been noodling around for a couple of years now, and I just, it, it occurred to me this afternoon because I'm out here working with metal and, you know, fire is a chemical reaction. Because to maybe oversimplify, what is energy? Energy is simply motion. Heat energy, electrical energy, um, chemical energy, all of it is just motion. You know, how does chemical energy equal motion? Well, as the chemicals bond together, which they have to move to bond together or break apart, they're moving, but in doing so, they generate heat, which is um, a large release of motion in a short period of time, you know, the explosion of gunpowder and whatnot, to use an example. So, all energy is motion. And so, I'm out here, I'm cutting steel with my cutting torch, and I'm marveling at the idea that 
steel will actually burn. And I've never done this. I'm, I'm not good enough with the torch to be able to do this, but you can take an oxycetylene cutting torch and cut steel with it. You know, and once you start cutting steel, you can turn the acetylene off and as long as you keep the oxygen fed to it at the right rate and your travel speed is correct and your distances and you know once if everything falls into place and, and you have a steady hand and can hold it that way you can cut the acetylene off and continue to cut the metal with only the oxygen because the steel is actually burning And that to me is marvelous. It's, it's amazing that, that Yahweh balanced all of creation, even in its fallen state, the way that he has. So if things are so balanced in the fallen, decaying state that we live in, you know, and the universe is decaying, because scripture even says that the universe groans, you know, looking to be redeemed. Imagine how things could have been before the flood. So, there you have it. The metallic hydrogen shell known as the firmament in scripture. Destabilized, bound with the extra free oxygen that was in the atmosphere at the time to, you know, chemically form water and rain down on the earth, which scripture also says that the fountains of the great deep were broken up. So aside from the rain, that means that apparently we did not have oceans then the way that we do now. We had seas on the planet, but not the vast oceans that we have. Because if the land mass was covering the water, think of it like a sinkhole. The most common cause of sinkholes is when there's been so much groundwater pumped out and there's been none to replenish that which was taken away eventually you know there's a void there's a lack of substance there so the sand that the water layer is in starts to settle okay so it settles and that sand that the water layer was in was holding up the clay layer that was above that so once the sand settles you know, there's a void between the sand and the clay, and clay is pretty stout, you know. It'll stay in place by itself for a long time. But eventually, it's going to give way. And once the clay layer gives away, you know, the topsoil is just sitting on top of the clay. Then, boom, you know, so your stratified layers of different density materials, once the water's gone, you know, there's just, there's, there's nothing there. So imagine the fountains of the great deep you know how much land mass did they hold up and once they were broken up and then all the rain you know the the earth's the earth's diameter the hard surface of the earth imagine if you were to take all of that water and raise all the land masses of the ocean floor above it you know so then imagine taking all the water off the planet completely. The, the, the complete diameter, the total diameter of the planet would shrink. So basically that's what happened at the flood. The diameter of the land mass shrunk because the water and the dirt traded places. So you had the flood. Noah was on the boat for a year, year and a half. I'm terrible at remembering these numbers for some reason. But um, at the end of that, you know, Yahweh causes earthquakes and, and whatnot to cause land masses to rise. 
which would leave low areas for the flood waters to recede into. And that's what we call the oceans today. I know I'm not so good at explaining and conveying my thinking and thought processes and whatnot, but I would certainly like to hear or like to read y'all's input. If you have any thoughts on it, you know, feel free to comment. But as always, keep the comments respectable or respectful. I should say what's respectable is kind of like beauty in the eye of the beholder. But at least remain respectful, you know. We don't want any name calling or ugly words or slurs or anything like that. But certainly, you know, I, I definitely want y'all's input. And remember, it's your responsibility to study the scriptures for yourself. That would be Acts chapter 17, verses 10 and 11. And it's also 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. And I hope to see you all in the kingdom. Thanks for watching.